Okay, hi. Um, my name is Michal Toman. Uh, I'm currently employed by a company named Imagination Technologies. Uh, you might know me, I've been working at Red Hat for quite a while before. Uh, and now I have been contracted to work on... Yes. Uh, so I have been contracted to work on Fedora for MIPS. Uh, what I will be talking about is firstly MIPS architecture in general, um, then MIPS and what it means for Fedora, where are we, uh, then some hardware that you can or cannot use and buy, and hopefully a live demo. So MIPS in general. Uh, MIPS has been around for quite a while. It's been introduced in 1981 as a university project for RISC CPUs. Um, the MIPS company was founded by the professor who led the, who led the university research team in 1984. Um, SGI, as you may know, bought the company in 1992. And, um, and, and, and imagination technologies. I mean, uh, there hasn't been a lot of work around MIPS uh, in the last decades, let's say, and, and imagination technologies just bought the, bought the company in uh, 2013. So for the actual CPUs, uh, there are loads of, loads of, loads of instruction sets, different instruction sets uh, we can basically divide them into two groups. First are legacy, which uh, ended in 1998, and then modern ones. The legacy MIPS 1 to MIPS 5. Um, some routers and some boards are still using them, but um, I don't think that's really relevant anymore or for something like future development. So. So let's talk about the modern ones. Uh, they call them MIPS32 and MIPS64, obviously. Uh, MIPS32 and 64 are specified in revisions uh, 1, 2, 3, and 5. Uh, Wikipedia says 4 was skipped because it brings bad luck in Asia. I don't know if, whether that's true or not. But <laughs> and and uh, there's a new specification. Uh, really six for both 32 and 64 bits, which was, which was designed by Imagination Technologies and which has some compatibility issues. It's not really all, all fully backwards compatible because the, the rest is fully backwards compatible. The really six um, solves some historical issues that MIPS has to this day, but it, at the cost of the compatibility. So, and the entity. MIPS can do both. You chose, basically it depends on, it depends on what uh, the CPU is designed to do, but uh, in general, you can just pick uh, the and the entity at reset and go with whatever. Um, unlike other architectures, MIPS has three major ABIs. It has the O32, which is the old 32-bit ABI um, uh, it has 32-bit uh, data registers and pointers, and it has some extensions, like for floating point registers. Uh, I'll be talking about that. Uh, then there is N64, which is like fully 64-bit ABI, and then there is N32, which is kind of hybrid. Um, it's, it has 32-bit pointers and 64-bit data. Is the opposite of what Intel does, because Intel wanted just to have more memory on 32-bit data, and um, MIPS wanted to have 64-bit data. Like, for example, you want 64-bit uh, time or 64-bit counters in the network appliances, but you still want to keep your binaries as small as possible. So, so that's the motivation. And for for the variants of the O32 ABI. Uh, the first two are quite straightforward, like uh, 
the floating point registers are either 32 or 64 bits. Uh, the FP64A is kind of interesting. I, it took me a while to get how it works. But it actually uh, tells your system you have 64 bits white registers, but underneath uh, the, the, uh, the implementation in hardware is that you actually use two 32-bit registers. The, the, I don't know whether it kernel does it or uh, probably GLPC that splits it and sets it into two registers. And actually, if you have an embedded assembly or whatever, you only can use the, the even register addresses. And if you use the, the odd ones, it will fail compiling. So, yeah. And then there is the FPXX, which tries to be somehow compatible with everything. It assumes nothing and really either either um, uses what's available or or goes with whatever code is linked to it. Like uh, the FPXX code is kind of neutral. And if you link it with 32-bit, it starts assuming 32-bit. If you link it with 64-bit, it starts assuming 64-bit from the moment. Um, today, MIPS, where MIPS is used. Networking, of course. Switches, routers, embedded on network cards. Um, Internet backbone, telephony, um, microcontrollers. Uh, yeah, in um, car industry, in in uh, like different driver aids, um, wearables. There, I even seen a tablet, and of course, video game consoles. And and uh, I was told MIPS is also. Um, MIPS is also starting to play in high-performance computing. And what usually runs on MIPS these days is Linux. Android has been ported in 2012 or 2013, I believe. Uh, all the BSD variants. And of course, I was surprised, actually, that uh, the embedded Windows, I knew about that, but Windows NT up to the 4.0 uh, has also run on MIPS, like on every other architecture. Yeah, I just thought something. Yeah. It's also used in aviation. Uh, on, uh, like, uh, I think it's called the Yes, it's a risk. So, um, MIPS and Fedora. Um, there has been a bootstrap attempt between Fedora uh, 11 and 13, and uh, they called the architecture MIPS 64EL. It was using the hybrid N32 ABI, um, little Indian, obviously. But there was little interest, and in Fedora 13, it just died. I mean, you can still, you can still get the packages from, from the original author, but, but it's, you know, it's a part of, a subset of Fedora 13. So then we have started our Fedora 22 bootstrap in last year, in March. Uh, we chose two architectures. MIPS64L, uh, which is now fully 64-bit, and a well, little Indian, obviously, and MIPSL, which is the 32-bit ABI with the FPXX, with the most compatible variant of all the ABIs. And at this moment, we are in stage four. We are uh, preparing to deploy Koji. Koji hardware has been due to arrive in October, then November, December. And actually last week I got the photo of the actual machines standing in a rack. So I believe we finally have that and, and we can deploy Koji now. So there are actually 64-bit machines available? Yes. I'll get to that. Um, yeah, uh, you might see, I've sent an email that's Fedora 23 or uh, reasonable subset of Fedora 23 
um, has been sort of released on last week, basically, or this week even. Um, uh, there are some images for Cremu and images for uh, CI20 board. I'm going to get to that. Uh, so status. Um, for 32-bit MIPS, uh, you can see it's like almost 7,000 out of some 8,000, I think. It's 8,008 packages, source packages and Fedora 23. Um, Xphase and LXD desktops work. Um, there are some issues with building Java, like some real issues that we need to address. Uh, Adan is bootstrap. Valgrain only has support for the 32, fully 32-bit uh, ABI. It has no, no support for 64-bit extensions. And one thing is that uh, the dash pi flag that Fedora uses for hardening is kind of broken on MIPS and uh, breaks every, every package that uses hardening. Uh, on the 64 bits, um, there's, there's a little less packages built just because uh, the build farm for 32 bits is a little larger. Uh, desktops also work via VNC. I am not aware of any MIPS 64 machine with video output. Um, yeah, Java builds, but Eclipse needs bootstrapping and Ada, obviously. And it has some, some interesting issues with uh, Lungsun cores, which are made in China. Um, some Lungsun engineers try to contact us sometimes. They raise uh, compatibility issues, like they have some instructions that, uh, that uh, uh, are rounding values in a different way than, than other cores. And they need to, they always ask us to disable some optimizations or well, basically almost all the optimizations to, I mean, be fully compatible. But when you ask them, I mean, what's the root cause, you get no answer or, or you just get ask my manager and that's the end of the conversation or something like that. So, yeah, um, needs more communication, definitely. Okay, issues, we've got quite a while. Obviously, packaging, if arcs. Um, some packages lack upstream support. Um, there's no OCaml for MIPS. And, and yeah, different, uh, uh, different uh, JavaScript JITs are or are not working, or even if they have MIPS support, it's for some ancient instruction set. And, and nobody really works on that anymore, so that's it. An interesting thing that uh, the GNU build IDs aren't supported in MIPS. If you try the, with build ID style called GNU, uh, GCC fails. Uh, obviously, Bootstrap required. I was talking Java, Eclipse, Ada. Um, interesting thing, 32-bit uh, MIPS only has three gigabytes of virtual space in a kernel. You cannot add more. Um, don't ask me why, it has something to do with mapped and unmapped memory, but that's, that's as far as I understand it. Um, yeah, the dash M32 and 64 flags are not recognized by GCC, which some, some Fedora packages add explicitly by, by the mode, yeah. M64 is not, it's not present also on MV8. Yes. So a lot of packages yeah, yeah, yeah. fix it for it. Yeah. Yeah. Or you need to uh, add like if arc ARM64 and MIP64L. I've seen that. It it's uh, saved me quite a lot of work. Uh, yeah. Another interesting thing that you name only tells you MIPS or MIP64. Uh, you don't get the Indianity. You don't even get the the instruction set, or I mean, MIPS 64 release six isn't binary compatible with the previous with the previous uh, binaries, but it tells you MIPS 64 anyway. So, so that's not a good not a good uh, way to d distinguish your architecture. And uh, 
most of the packages actually use auto tools or CMake and they handle it properly, but there are some packages that that just check your name and go for it. So, yeah. Um, yeah, dash L atomic needs to be specified explicitly for on 32 bit maps. I have no idea why, but it just needs. Java, that's a, a really interesting story. I've been trying to, it, um, with, with the zero, with the zero, uh, like, interpreted mode, it builds fine on 64 bits. Uh, on 32 bits, it dies on illegal instruction. Um, I've asked several guys why this could be. I mean, our internal tools guys, Java guys, kernel guys, and nobody is able to tell me. Uh, when we disassembled the code, uh, found the instructions, just put it into a text file, compiled it, let it run, it was working. So only in the context of Java, for some reason, the instructions are illegal. We, we've been on that for quite a while, and I mean, Nobody's able to tell what, what could be the issue. Yeah, and then there's uh, insanely long build time. I mean, um, MIPS obviously is uh, not the most powerful architecture in the world, but my most favorite package for the last half a year is Libint, which is a, a library that computes integrals, which uh, it actually takes to some seven or eight hours to build on primary. On 32-bit MIPS, it took 21 days. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I bought the QT4 building for five days. It's long. No, no but uh, I actually think there's something like conceptually wrong. I mean, 21 days is really too long for a uh, sane build. I mean, I understand it's C++ and C++ is slow, but yeah, there's probably something that could be done. Yeah, and the full list is on Fedora Wiki. If you just go to Wiki Fedora Project Arc uh, Architecture Maps, you can find it. Uh, future plans: short term, deploy the Koji finally, um, of course, and finish the Bootstrap. Mid term, uh, fix or exclude Arc all the packages. I mean bring this to a state where it's a secondary architecture like every other. Uh, for sure, we will be bootstrapping the R6 architecture. It's been added to Quemu uh, in, in summer. And, and from long-term, Imagination wants to be included in Resident Enterprise Linux, but there's, there's still a long way to go for that. So, hardware. Uh, current status of hardware, very little standardization. I mean, very little. Every, every, every chip manufacturer builds its own. I mean, it's very similar to ARM, even though ARM like, unifies over time, or at least a bit. This is in the state, state where ARM was, I would say, five years ago when we started with Fedora. And um, it's even uh, the same status in the kernel that you cannot build a generic ARM kernel and module for a chipset. You need to pick the one board you are building for at the beginning. And, and this, well, uh, with ARM, Fedora did the flavored kernels, and it was a pain in the ass, but that's what MIPS. Yeah. But that's, that's the status MIPS, in, MIPS is in at this moment. So. Yeah, lack of support in upstream kernel. Um, no, well, I would say current hardware runs on upstream kernel. Some, some uh, boards are very close to that. Some are um, very far from that. But, but with fully upstream kernel, there's, there's very little support. Uh, of course, there's a lack of hackable hardware because mostly MIPS is used in embedded boards, like it's embedded on your, uh, on, um, 10 gigabit NIC, or it's uh, some coprocessor for, for whatever. But you cannot really like run your operating system on on the actual MIPS CPU. You can get your software yeah, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, the issue with that is that rotors usually don't have more than 
256 of memory, uh, 256 yeah. megs of memory, because for some reason, uh, I was told it's a historical reason, I don't see into that, uh, MIPS only has support for 256 megs of memory, and if you want more, you need to enable high mem, which uh, decreases performance. Yeah, and there are, you, you can buy router boards, but they are usually Begendian. At this moment, we are not building Begendian Fedora. We might add it in the future. The issue is really, I would say, lack of build hardware, because we just got our little Indian Koji, so. But there's, there's, uh, there's no like uh, conceptual problem with doing that, really. It's just the resources. Yeah. And yeah, usually the, the memory, I don't know if anybody of you tried to use Fedora with 256 megabytes of memory, but you cannot really use DNF if you have that. Uh, maybe Atomic could be a solution for that. I mean, because uh, I don't know. Time will show. Uh, so uh, one board you can buy for sure is the Creator CI20. Uh, it's, uh, it's been designed for, by Imagination Technologies. Uh, just as just to have some development board, it has a dual core CPU, gig of RAM, eight gig NAND, uh, whatever SD card slot. Uh, it's basically similar to all the ARM development boards that came out over the last five years. Uh, it has a, also a, a a pinout compatible with Raspberry Pis, and you can get it you can get it for uh, uh, 50 pounds, 50 British pounds. I think it's 65 dollars in the US. Um, uh, yeah, I'm getting that. The CI40 is a is a 32-bit board. Yeah, it's 32-bit Little Indian. Uh, the board Imagination is planning next is the CI40. Uh, it's uh, designed to be for the Internet of Things, it's not really a development board. It has a it has a low power consumption CPU, uh, double core dual threaded, so you should actually see four threads in the ROS. Again, it only has a uh, quarter gig of memory. Uh, it has a small flash, and uh, it has some dedicated chip for for the six low pan uh, stack used with. Uh, the Internet of Things. Um, imagination we will actually ship it as a kit. That they have some some sensor boards already designed for it. Uh, I, I think there's a like a box and three sensors by default. You can buy more. Um, they have raised funds on Kickstarter. The board I believe is uh, either being in production or the design is finished and will go to production, but it's coming. They, they raised enough funds on Kickstarter. Can you still order one of those? What? Can you still order one of those? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then we have the, the uh, 64 bits, uh, the SDNA. Uh, it's I think some dedicated network appliance, software dedicated network appliance. It's MIPS 64R2, uh, Cavium built these boards. They come in several configurations um, from 4 to 48 CPUs, from 4 to 4 CPUs of memory. And they have SATA slot for a system. Uh, you can order them from Reno Labs, it's an American manufacturer. You know, if you want to have it shipped into Europe, uh, you need to pay taxes. Unfortunately, uh, that's the issue. They don't mention price. Last time I've checked, they've only sold to companies. They only had one one product. Uh, when I checked, like, well, when creating this presentation, now there are actually, uh, I think, five or six configurations available from uh, presumably cheapest to to the most expensive. Um, uh, we only have, I mean, in the imagination, we have the SDNA 7130, whatever. It was the only one board that was available. It was codenamed UTM-8. And uh, it was about uh, $1,000. It's a quad-core, it's a quad-core MIPS, I think, with 8 gigs of memory. 
Yeah. Yeah, and these machines are actually the machines that will become Koji. It's a, it's a photo from the data center. Yeah, so I mean, you need to, you need to ask Renola. They have a form, like, ask us if we want to order. I. Yeah, uh, I never saw the situation with hardware is good. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 would I would love to tell you, I mean, buy this board, it's... Yeah. It's, it's, it's even worse than an MD8. Yeah. <laughs> when I was planning the presentation like half a year ago, or a year, oh, half a year ago, ARM 8 wasn't in the shape it's now, and I was like, I might have, will be able to compare it to ARM V8, but at this moment, I mean, Really, it's worth. But uh, there are there are other boards planned. I mean, Imagination just bought the the maps like three years ago, and and they basically started thinking about uh, new boards, and they really do plan some next boards. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we will we will get some more. Yeah, I see. Because, I understand okay, that. you will build a MIPS 32-bit uh, distribution, which you cannot now call Fedora because it's not official. Yeah. Month, right? And it will be used by one, two boards, right? One is for Internet of Things, where most of people will go for ARM anyway. Mm. And the other one is for this one gigabyte memory board, where mm. most of people will go for ARM anyway. Or you have 64 bit for one server. So, good luck. Uh, um, yeah, you're right. I mean, I, I, I cannot tell you anything else. It's like you have long term plan is, oh, it would be great to have rail on it. Yes. Uh, replace rail by centers, so, and then it will be a bit, it will be closer to reality. Because center. <laughs> Once you get Fedora running on this hardware, mm. you can use it to uh, bootstrap CentOS. Yeah. And CentOS you can build on your own. You can uh, play with CentOS guys, got, get it included, etc. And mm. <coughs> RHEL for basically very niche uh, market, I don't think it's possible. Maybe we should let him finish his presentation before yeah. we shit all over. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. You can of course use Quemu. It works. Um, there are a lot of CPUs, um, mm, both 64 bits and 32 bit, both big NDN and little NDN. There are some issues like you cannot get SMP for whatever reason, and you can only specify two gigs of memory. Quemu doesn't let you specify more. Uh, live demo. Okay, the moment of public humiliation. Um, okay, hopefully not today because um, the presentation is being run from the CI20 board. Um, you can see I have a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard. Uh, yeah, the unfortunately the. GPU driver is proprietary, so you have to use you have to use frame buffer, but it mostly works. I don't know. I've got Bluetooth peripherals. I can connect to the Wi-Fi, hopefully, even though it's unusable here. Yeah, that's about it. So that's my live demo. If you want to see anything, if you want to see anything, just ask. I can try. Uh, yeah, sure. Nice progress. So, um, one of the things that you pointed out was there's not a lot of upstream support. Is imagination working on trying to improve 
that? Yeah, so um, Imagination bought MIPS as a company in general with all their employees. They are in process of somehow merging the workflows. They want to do that, but I mean, it's still a work in progress. They, they, they want to do this, they want to work upstream, but hopefully we'll get there. No, it's all manual work. I mean, uh, when, you, when you get to the point where you have Koji, you can actually do some automation. But before that, I mean, uh, uh, I saw a project that would like actually uh, try to ease up this process. I don't know what status it's in. Debian has something like that. Yeah, I know. Debian has a shell script where you like basically bootstrap Debian architecture and on the other end you get an ISO, but no. Yeah, no, Fedora has nothing like that. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, the GPU is, uh, is the P Power VR chip which is actually the primary business area of imagination, so it's their own. And, um, but they, they are discussing uh, building uh, or providing some like uh, limited open source drivers to the kernel so that it works at least somehow. Uh, basically something like Nouveau or, or yeah. It's not yet there, but the discussions are ongoing. Anything else? For servers, are there any plans to support the UA file? No. I mean, uh, um, there's... Uh, mm, no, no, the, sh the short answer is no. I mean, I, I'm not aware of any. There, there might be in future. I, I'm not saying UFI will not be available, but at this moment I'm not aware of that. You mean the... So, like, you have uh, several boards, and basically one, I think that they standardize on your board. So yes. Right. Uh, well, uh, there is the original MIPS bootloader. It's called, I don't know. CFE. CFE. Uh, I, I don't remember exactly. And, but basically, all the um, current boards work with you boot. Uh, I mean the CI20 board has. It has a newer one. It has a newer one. That's excellent. I'm not, I'm not sure how much they push, how or what what part of it push, they pushed upstream, but nothing. nothing? No. Okay. It's because I know I know I know in a kernel there are bits. I mean you can build upstream kernel with CI20 dev config, but it actually doesn't work because you don't have any storage subsystem to put your root FS on. But but well. Yeah, I've got. Uh, what? When you the mainline kernel, oh, I didn't try that. Then you can um, I just checked last time that uh, MMC, USB, and uh, NAND didn't work at all, so I gave up. And uh, I mean, the patches are. You can grab the patches. They have a 318 kernel on it. And they have Git Reaper. You can grab the patches. There's lots of them, really. And uh, you need some, I mean, USB chipset support for, for, the, for the actual. I don't think so, actually. OK. Uh, OK, so yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm really not a kernel guy. I really just like working on the 
packaging stuff and bootstrapping. So, but definitely uh, make your point. Uh, I will I will raise it to people who work on that. Um, good question, no idea. I mean, um, the board is, if you go to Reno Labs site, they have pre-configured. It's like the most powerful board is uh, 48 cores and 64 gigs of memory, and that's basically what's written there. And in case you want to order or more information, contact us. That's what's written there, so that's as much as I know, really. Anything else? No. Well, thank you then. <laughs> For those who ask questions and don't have a scarf, you can take one here. Okay. Okay. 
So I go look at my email where I filter this guy's email, and he's like, dude, you lied. That is so awesome. It's crazy. So I'm writing him an email right back. You're like, you're never going to guess where I am. Right. Right. Congratulations. Hopefully I am properly caffeinated. Oh, thanks. If I could remember where I put my talk, that would also help. All right, that should be good. Uh, this? Yes, yep. you can. Yep. 